Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab, and in this Alex Bregman Hitting Mechanics video, we're going to go over a few things. The video is of a July 20th, 2019 back-to-back-to-back -back -back homer game where Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, and Jordan Alvarez launched back-to-back -back home runs in the third inning to give the Astros a 4-0 lead. <clears throat> the, uh, obviously, the video is courtesy of MLB.com. In the video, we're going to be looking at a few, quite a few hitters, not just Alex Bregman in the hitting mechanics analysis, but we're going to look at and compare Alex Bregman's swing to Jose Altuve, Ronald Acuna Jr. is kind of the odd man out here, he's not an Astro, and Jordan Alvarez. The common denominator here for at least these three hitters is that they're in today's game, considered small hitters. Jordan Alvarez is more of a 6'5 big guy, but the catapult loading system principles that we are going to be comparing these hitters up against and seeing what they do, what they don't do, are similar between or commonalities between all four of these hitters' swings. And then at the end, we will compare Alex Bregman's use of the principles to, like I said, Jose Altuve, Alvarez and Acuna Jr. So let's take a look at Alex Bregman's height and weight. So you can see at baseballreference.com, Alex Bregman here, he's got six foot, 180 pounds, which will be interesting when we look at the other three hitters, but that is what his height and weight are. And so far, as you can see here in 2019, let's take a look at his swing and how it compares to the catapult loading system principles. Let's look at a little context of the pitches themselves. So if you look at this swing over here, this ball is, I think it's a slider that's in, middle in, inside part of the plate at 87 miles an hour. So middle, inside, and then on this one, I'm not sure when this one was. I borrowed this from good old Jim Ambrosius, and I don't think it tells us what the actual miles per hour is unless I move it over. But you can see that at least the pitch location is kind of middle, middle. I think actually it was around, it was 91 plus, somewhere in there, 91 to 94, maybe 95. But kind of middle, middle, missed his spot. He, catcher was looking for something low and away and he ended up over the middle of the plate on these. So a couple things. Let's start with the big three. The first one is showing numbers. You can see Bregman as he's standing here. You can't really see his back at all. And then you're going to see that front shoulder for those uh, kinesiology nerd heads out there. You're going to see that front shoulder protract or that, that front scap protract. And you're going to see his name. I know this video is a little grainy, but you can see his, his last name. You can see that number peeking out, that single digit number peeking out as he's getting to his landing position. The pelvis starts to open. You can see it's opening here. And that creates the, we call it the ringing towel effect, like you're wringing out a towel. And at the bottom, so you have basically the spine is three pieces. You have the C, the cervical, you have the T, the thoracic, and you have the L, the lumbar at the bottom. And you have to picture that as three hands wringing a towel out. So the top the top hand and the bottom hand are ringing the towel in the same direction and the middle hand or the second hand is ringing in the opposite direction of those two of the two bookends here as we're looking the pelvis is ringing this way the head is anchoring in a similar kind of positioning of what the pel the pelvis is moving the head's not moving it's more of an anchor but it's in a tracking position that's not letting the shoulders take it off the ball and it's not and it's also not letting the shoulders pull it uh pull it off pull it off or push it more towards the catcher so the head acts more like an anchor that's the top hand the shoulders are the middle hand that's that's rotating opposite of the pelvis and the head. So you can see that pelvis kind of creating and winding up the lower half, the head and the shoulders are already wound up just because the head's anchoring and you're seeing he's hitting this ball pretty good. That, and then on this swing, kind of similar. Again, I don't know what year this is, could be the same year, but you can see the same thing, more clear because of the, the white jersey here. You can see the two, you can see the last name, maybe can't read it, but you can see the letters there because of the grainy video. But you can see him showing his numbers versus when he's starting here. So you're seeing that front shoulder pull in. The other thing we talk about is a down shoulder angle. Now we use this in a couple different ways, do this in a couple different ways. We can use the back elbow. We can have the hitter imagine that their rib cage is a lantern and that if they just stand normal, that the light is equally 
coming out, radiating out from their body in an equal fashion. And what we're trying to do is close off some of the light in the front and get more light to shine on the catcher and the hitter. So what we're seeing is we're seeing this kind of slight downward angle. We're seeing it over here as well. Slight downward now, probably not quite as much as some other hitters like Miggy Cabrera or like a Mookie Betts but we see a somewhat of a down shoulder angle nonetheless. Now he's not hiding his hands too much. You can still see his hands here. This would be the, the scap pinch or the, some people call it the scap row. I call it just hiding hands from the pitcher. And we're not really seeing his back elbow peek out as much as some other hitters that do it. So that's something that he could probably get a little bit better at. So let's take a look at both of these from the chest view. Okay, I lied on this side. We're not going to see the chest view because there is no chest view, but we'll see it on this side. So let's start with this one first. Kind of get a close-up here of the pelvis ringing out the towel down here in the lumbar and the T-spine where they both meet, the thoracic spine where they meet. You see the, that pelvis kind of moving forward. Hips lead the way, as Ted Williams said. Totally true. But you can see the shoulders are kind of locked down. They're not not flying open at the same time as the pelvis. People call this 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 kind of lag position or the separation really the separation is created before this even happens before the pelvis even goes and we don't i don't even like to see the hitter turn their pelvis in towards the catcher or say take their belt buckle and point it in towards the catcher because we really need it to get because then it's got to travel farther and we need it to, to kind of stick to a neutral position so as the foot starts to hit the ground toe touches and the heel starts to drop then we're going to start to see that pelvis start to open so it's not really a teach with my hitters i don't really teach that pelvis stuff or exploding the hips or anything like that we just kind of let the pelvis do what it does but what we do is we wind up, especially at the top, the head and the shoulders, we get the head to kind of anchor out in a, in a tracking position. We get the shoulders, to the front shoulder to pass underneath the chin and wind up as much as the hitter can while keeping the head anchored and not letting that front shoulder pull that head in so we, it doesn't affect vision or anything like that. And then we just allow that bottom hand, uh, the bottom hand that's wringing out the towel just kind of happen on its own. So that's kind of a close up of what's going on here on the left. On the right, we see the chest view. And again, similar, we went over this from the pitcher's view, but you can see he's not hiding his hands too much. He's Front arm shape is another thing I want you to kind of look at. You can see the downward shoulder angle here, the slight downward shoulder angle. It looks beautiful if we, that lantern analogy, you can see his rib cage, he's closing down some of the light that's coming out from the front. Then you can see a lot more light here in the back that's coming out. So that's indicative of that downward shoulder angle and those spinal engine mechanics. So with the front arm shape, you can see he's got a tricep guard on here, elbow guard, and you're you're going to see a longer front arm. You're not going to see this bent 90 degree bend like you see a lot of videos on Twitter by some some people out there that teach this. You're going to see a little bit more of a bend here. Remember, this ball was more middle middle. This one was more inside. And even here, you can see his elbow from this view, a lot closer view, is it has a slight bend in it, you can see definitely right here, you can see that slight bend, but he's still getting to this ball, maybe not barreling it up, but again, he hit this, hit the, hit a home run on this one, slightly inside the sweet spot, more towards the hands, but he still did some damage here, with a slight bend in the front arm. Inside, there's a lot of hitting coaches out there that don't think, well, you can't get to an inside pitch or even a pitch up in the zone with an arm bar or even a slight bend, and you can. And this is, this is what we teach, to maximize consistently hard contact. When you bend the front arm, you're, you're shortening the lever. When you shorten the lever, you do the opposite of multiplying force at the end of that lever. So it's an engineering principle. The longer the lever, the more the for force multiplies at the end of the lever. Just think about a one-inch wrench trying to unscrew the big old giant bolt on the top of a fire hydrant versus a 10 uh, uh, say a five foot wrench versus 10 inch it's gonna be a lot easier with the five foot wrench than it is with the 10 inch wrench so over here you can see that slight bend there a little bit more of a bend than he's working to try and get to more of a straightened arm position here and you can see his upper upper half is just a little bit floating over his front half not too bad here, but pretty good use of the catapult loading system principles, the showing numbers, downward shoulder angle, probably could get a little bit better at hiding the hands or that kind of scap row, scap pinch or whatnot. And uh, front arm shape, you know, be able, to, be able to maintain that shape. 
if it's a slight bend or a lockout, being able to maintain the same shape of that or pretty close to the same shape all the way to impact is going to help hitters be more consistent with their hardball contact. When that arm is bent and starts bent and then even moves to a straight position at impact, you have a lot of bending going on there, which is even if they get to a lengthened out position at impact, they're gonna maximize their, their impact, but up to impact, they're moving the sweet spot around there by shortening the lever and then slowly lengthening it, it's going to create some inconsistencies at their impact position. So let's take a look at the next small hitter is Jose Altuve. All right, here's Jose Altuve, as you can see here, baseball reference, lists him at 5'6", 165 pounds. Most of you know him out there. If you do not, you have your head under the sand like an ostrich. All right, here is Jose Altuve on the left, and you have Bregman here on the right. So let's take a look at Altuve and looking at the same kind of catapult loading system principles. Let's look at showing numbers. You can see here that you can't, you can kind of see the two peeking out here on Altuve's jersey before he goes into his swing. And this is something actually he's he's gotten much better at in the last few years. When the power surge kind of happened, you saw him starting to show his numbers more. And what's interesting is a lot of hitting coaches out there hate that he strides in towards the plate. And they say that, oh, he's just gifted, oh, he can just get away with it. But I've seen this guy, and this is hitting, I think he's hitting a 91, I think it was a fastball, it might be a hanging slider or something, but uh, he didn't miss his, he, hit, he missed his spot here. He was supposed to locate this down and away, ends up up, middle, up, uh, away, up, somewhere around there, not 91 miles an hour, so he elevated a little bit. And with Jose Altuve, you're seeing him close his swing off or strike close, almost kind of similar. You'll see the setup with Giancarlo Stanton where he starts closed with his stance and they'll argue, oh, he can't get to that inside pitch. And if he does, if they see he does and they say, oh, he's just gifted. I wouldn't teach my hitters to do that. It's so funny how you, you back up and you apply the brakes when there's instances where he does do what people say he doesn't, gonna, doesn't do. But this is okay. I don't I don't really correct this on my hitters. It's more of a barrel path issue if they're striding closed and they're getting jammed. It's not so much the getting jammed part or the, the striding closed is is what's jamming them. What's jamming them is that they're they're casting their barrel too early and they have to shorten that up and comp make that more compact when the pitch is middle in or middle up. So I love this about Altuve and it also helps to a hitter to show numbers, especially hitters who stride out or step in the bucket getting them to stride in is really good even if you want to if you don't like this and you want them to stride straight up get them striding in and feeling that and then what's going to happen it's going to make it easier for them to make that change and go more into a neutral straight up type of a stride but you can see nonetheless you can see both numbers here huge just bright as day last name if it wasn't so grainy it'd be pretty pretty clear so you can see showing numbers the other thing that altuve does a little bit not quite as much is the and you can see over here with Bregman you can see the same number showing going on but this downward shoulder angle so he gets a slight one he might be in the three to four degree range where I kind of like my hitters to be in the six to ten degree range I think Bregman over here is probably in that a little bit better than Altuve he's probably more in the three to five degree range which is good. A little bit goes a long way with this when it comes to spinal injury mechanics, but that's something that in the last couple of years that Altuve's gotten a little bit better at. He used to be more flat with the shoulders, but we're seeing a little bit more of a down. You can definitely see him kind of hiding his hands, right? His hands are disappearing behind him. You're not really seeing that elbow peek out and pinching of the scap, which we'll look at a chest view of this of this particular swing, but he's definitely hiding his hands better than Bregman. Bregman, you can see that bottom hand and a little bit of the top hand there so let's take a look at his chest view all right over here with Altuve you can see with the chest view and again a slight down shoulder angle again if we take the lantern analogy he's closing down a little bit of the light in the front he's pinching the light in the front a little bit in the back you can see a lot more going on so he's shining more light on the catcher and the umpire so he's gotten a little bit better at that still a little bit but like I said it goes a long way it's a lot better than nothing at all or even better than some hitters out there that will, the young hitters that will land in an uphill position with the shoulders, almost like if you're going to throw a soft toss or throw a long toss and you angry, angle your shoulders up. Well, that's that's not good either. We're going to be collapsing the backside on something like that. But check out the front arm shape. So same kind of elbow guard, tricep guard that Bregman's got. But look how much straighter he's keeping the arm. Now he's not locked out. I'm not saying he's locked out. He's got a slight bend here. A little bit more bend in these frames. But you can see his barrel path. And again, this ball was, they missed, remember, up 
and away a little bit, but it was kind of middle up. And you're going to see this barrel pad. Look at the catcher's glove. It's in line almost with his back foot. So I tell my hitters, whenever it's middle, the middle third of the plate, ball's located middle third, we want to knock the back foot catcher's glove off. So like if the catcher's glove's here, the ball's middle, then we should be knocking his glove off. If it's middle, oh, if it's outer third of the plate, then we're going to knock off the real catcher's glove normally where the catcher's glove is. But you can see a nice tight swing here because the ball is elevated. He's having to not barrel dump and he's having to be tight with his turn and keep his barrel up. And you can see he's he's somewhere between the back foot and his belly button catcher's glove. Imagine this catcher's glove just kind of floating right here in line with his belly button. And he's knocking that belly button catcher's glove off, which is what we want to do when we're talking middle up or middle in locate pitch location. And again, we're doing this based on what the pitcher's doing, what their pattern is what we're hunting and it's not an in-swing adjustment that we're making here we're already making a decision before we even swing the bat before the pitcher even throws the ball based on the pitcher's pattern where they're throwing the ball where they tend to attack that's where we're gonna we're gonna end up hunting so it's not something that's in mid-swing adjustment which a lot of coaches out there kind of are miffed at the idea that we can keep the arm straightened out locked out and or slightly bent and be able to catch up to a ball up or even a ball middle in. It can happen, my hitters do it, and it happens, it especially happened, Ted Williams, Babe Ruth, all those hitters back then, until this adjustable swing started to get taught. Again, Bregman, just to, as our comparison, we're looking at him kind of a little bit more bent on this one than Altuve. Pretty consistent with the front arm shape. Definitely not giving up, like in some of the examples I talk about Mike Trout, where Mike Trout is on average 101 miles an hour when he's down and away, arm front arm locked out at impact versus up and in, and he's chicken winging more 90 degree angle with the front arm up and in, where he's 80 miles an hour, he's giving up 21 miles per hour ball exit speed, which is 84 feet, that's equivalent, that's giving up way too much. We can give up, like I tell my hitters, you can give up four to 16 feet of distance if you want by bending a little bit, not a big deal. But you see both these hitters, two small guys, five, six over here on the left, and you got five, 10, five, nine, or six foot over here on the right with Bregman and you're seeing them do some pretty cool stuff now let's bring in Acuna Jr. so here's Ronald Acuna Jr. here on the on the left I just want you to see pitch location here one of my hitters so this is about I think it was middle you can see where the catcher's gloves going can't you can't really see the plate so I actually I don't I don't really know where that's at plate wise I assume maybe the umpire was over the middle of the plate so possibly middle middle if not maybe slightly middle in seeing where he hit that ball where you can see it's right there, kind of more towards the hands inside the sweet spot. Still hits a home run on this. But one of my hitters showed me this, and I had to bring it up, back up Alex Bregman in this hitting mechanics analysis here and the front arm shape. And the reason he showed showed me this, because my hitter, was because we were working on this with him, trying to get him to maintain. He's good at locking out at the start of the turn or having a slight bend, but he's having a hard time holding that, which is a strength thing. We use a lot of overload training to do it. But being able to hit a pitch that's middle in, middle up, and maintain and not bend as you pull everything through, but maintain the shape of that front arm, as you can see here. Now, if you look at here, Ronald Acuna Jr. is, and this is again, baseballreference.com, you can see he's six foot, 180 pounds. So it's, it sounds like a similar size as Alex Bregman. So these guys are both pretty much the same size. And you can see with Ronald Acuna Jr., this isn't a big guy, right? This isn't a... Giancarlo Stanton or, or an Aaron Judge, he's doing pretty good about keeping that front arm shaped the same, locked out if not slightly bent. He's not giving up too much ball exit speed here, even if he has a slight bend in it. But what he's doing pretty well is with the barrel, is it's getting away from him just a little bit. I like to see a little bit more of an angle here where holding kind of more of a 90 degree angle between the bottom of the arm and, and the bat angle. But he does, maybe this is why he's kind of casting out a little bit early. Maybe is why he got it in on his hands a little bit. You can see where he made contact with that ball. Again, we saw it from the front view too. But you can see that front arm shape. He's maximizing his the amount of force that's being multiplied at the end of the lever. So the longer the lever, the harder the ball is going to get hit. It's just a fact. Perry Husband's done over 5,000 swing studies on this. And it's just a fact that when you hit a ball with the straight front arm, we're not talking about the back arm, front arm versus a bend in the front arm, a, a 
any bend, but more of a significant bend, the ball exit speeds are going to be significantly lower with a bend versus a straighter arm. So you're seeing Ronald Acuna Jr. in today's game, which everybody thinks it needs to be this adjustable swing, adjustable swing. But what happens with the adjustable swing when pitchers, the, the fastballs start disappearing that used to be down below, they disappear and they start appearing above. It's going to be a lot harder to hit fastballs elevated up, middle in, middle up, and then the slow stuff and the breaking stuff located middle down and middle away. Too much of a timing differential there to be able to adjust, look away and adjust in, or look in and adjust away. It's going to be, it's going to be almost damn near impossible to be able to do that when pitchers get smarter. Right now, pitchers are thrown into barrels, so you can get away with an adjustable swing. But if you're looking to maximize your hitter's ball exit speeds and maximize the consistency of hard ball contact, then there is a better way to do it. And there is a way to do it. Let's look at the last one is Jordan Alvarez, and we will finish this video. Okay, here is Jordan, uh, Jordan Alvarez. I might be saying his name wrong, sorry, Mr. Jordan. But you can see lefty here, big dude. You can see Jordan Alvarez on baseballreference.com, 6'5", 225 pounds. Bats left, throws right. But regardless of the bigger size, one of my other coaches was, his objection was, well, he's a bigger guy. You can't compare Bregman to Alvarez because it's apples to oranges. Well, yes and no. Dr. Allen, Dr. Allen Nathan, physicist, he said in a phone conversation I had with him that bat speed is a better and bigger indicator of batter ball distance than body mass. What people get mixed up is they mix up body mass with longer levers. Now, bigger, not so much bigger girth-wise, but longer hitters, taller hitters, have a longer, have longer levers, have longer limbs, longer wingspans. So a hitter like Aaron Judge, he can make contact with the pitch that with a, with a bend in his front arm and maybe even a significant bend. But if you bent his arms in a wingspan type of position where he's out like this and you put him up against Jose Altuve or Alex Bregman in a straight arm wingspan, and he would probably be pretty similar to the same amount of wingspan. So again, imagine Aaron Judge bending his arms and matching the locked out arms wingspans of Jose Altuve. So when Aaron Judge hits a ball 115 miles an hour with a, with a bend in his front arm, people are going, whoa, hey, look at that. You know, he's a big dude, he's, he's doing the thing. But if you take the same one at Jose Altuve with a locked out front arm, he might not be super equivalent to it, but if you compare apples to apples, so the same length of the lever, you're going to get the same ball exit speeds because the lever is what we're looking at here, not the body mass. So again, humans are humans. Humans move the same way, whether we're talking gender, whether we're talking more seasoned versus younger hitters, whether we're talking boys and girls, whether we're talking anything, it's the same body. It's the same body with some obvious changes biologically, female and male, but it's the same body movement. Everybody has arms and elbows and knees and legs. Everybody's got the same body. So human movement principles that are valid validated by real science, that's what we're trying to apply to hitting. So it doesn't matter if we're big or small, we can apply the same principles. I have small hitters that are crushing balls and I have big hitters that are crushing balls, but we're teaching them the same principles. That is the key, it's the principle. So if you look again here with Alvarez, you can see him showing his numbers, beautiful. You can see both those numbers pretty clearly. Now some hitters will differ. We always like to see at least a number and a half, if not two numbers on the back, but it all depends on the mobility and the shoulders and the lower back and different things like that. But we can see him down shoulder angle. You can see this nice down shoulder angle. You see those numbers back here. You see him even maybe hiding his hands a little bit. Yeah, a little bit there at the last second kind of hides him a little bit more than Bregman does. And if we look at the chest view with this swing, not really a chest view, but kind of a 45 degree angle down the line. You can see, again, we saw him showing his numbers. You can even see that, that first number peeking out from this view. You can see that down shoulder angle, kind of using that back elbow to create that down shoulder angle. Again, using that lantern analogy, you see a lot of the light coming out back here and, and he's closing off some of the light here. And then that front arm shape is slight bend. You can see coming through here, definitely not locked out until probably impact, but he's keeping that slight bend there. So that is the Alex Bregman hitting mechanics video. Make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go.
The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly. And it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.